What's up, y'all? Thank you for tuning in to Deuce of Farms. Before we get started, go ahead and leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on the post notification bells, do all that cool stuff, join the Patreon if you want to help the channel, buy some merch if you want to help the channel, whatever, it doesn't matter. As long as you're watching this video, that's all that matters to me, and I appreciate you guys so much. Also, hey, if you're Cowboys fans, hey, how about them Cowboys? Um, and anyways, let's go ahead and get into the video. I am going to be doing a full guide on DWC for beginners. I'm going to go all the way from the start to the very end. That way you know everything. I could really go in depth. I make this into a series rather than just one full video because the video is going to be super long and some people are just going to want specific topics like, hey, how do I deal with this? How do I deal with that? So that's why I'm making it into a series. So this the getting started may not be for you. So you may jump into episode two or three, whatever. I'm going to be releasing them weekly. So if you're seeing this as I post the first one, then you know you got a week until the next one or if you're seeing this later on then guess what go ahead and click the playlist going down to the link below in the description the comment section go find the next video and just keep watching them all show some support without further ado let's go ahead and get into the video this is episode one of the series and we're going to be talking about what exactly dwc is how to get started and what equipment you need for your system i know a lot of you are here are beginners and don't really know much about dwc or you've probably been doing it for some time and you're just really trying to get the grasp of it or you've probably been growing 20 years but you're deciding to switch over to dwc well i'm going to try to help you anywhere this is for beginners so i'm going to try to help you the best i can for you guys as beginners it's not that scary i know it seems super scary it's like oh i gotta get this i gotta get all this equipment and you know it is fairly simple we can just overcomplicate it just like we could do soil we could overcomplicate everything within our garden and this isn't as difficult as it sounds yes at first it's going to be a challenge and it's not ever going to really be too easy but you're going to get the used to it and you're really going to flow through and you're really probably going to like it you just got to try it out to see so what is dwc well dwc stands for deep water culture and i know it sounds pretty cool deep water culture that that sounds amazing right you just got the word culture and it just sounds like you're a part of something right it sounds like you got something special going and all it is it's a form of hydroponics in which your roots are going to be submerged in a nutrient water that's being oxygenated Yes, that is all in simple terms. I'm not going to make it too fancy, but pretty much you got your roots. They're hanging in some water. You don't need soil or anything like that. It is soilless, but the roots are right there in the water. And guess what? Plants need oxygen. So you have a pump or some outside source providing that oxygen and the aeration through your buckets or reservoir. Well, now let's go over the special equipment needed for DWC. First up, you're going to need a bucket or reservoir. That's pretty much going to act as your pot, whether it be a fabric pot, whatever. It's acting as your pot like in soil. So you're going to use a bucket, reservoir, whatever you use. It could be a gallon of milk. You can make it out of a mason jar, which I'm doing right now. But you're probably going to want something a little bigger because you're going to want bigger plants. So the typical bucket size that people use is about five gallons. Um, I've seen people use eight gallons. I said if you want to grow bigger plants. And I've also seen people grow 13 gallons. Um, I'm, like I said, I'm growing in a mason jar, but I also got some five-gallon buckets going. And that's going to be like the norm across the board but you may be wanting to bump it up to eight For the color of the bucket it doesn't really matter as long as it's stopping the light leak from coming in you're going to be fine it could literally be a clear bucket gallon of milk mason jar and it could be taped or spray painted to really stop the light from coming in you can have light come in but you're going to run into problems like algae and so we don't want that so you're going to want to get something that's not transparent it doesn't have to be black if you got heat issues and you know dwc you know not really a fan of heat so you can spray paint into something like white it's still going to reflect the light and it's not going to let any light in so it's going to lower the temps within the reservoir how many buckets do you need well that's all going to depend on you um it's dwc you can go from one bucket two bucket three bucket four the more buckets they're all their own individual reservoir so you're gonna have to treat them as such it's not already RDWC, RDWC, you have a system, it's recirculating, all the buckets are connected with one central reservoir, so you can pretty much work through all the plants in one little area. But the DWC, well, they're all their own individual ecosystem, or they're all their own individual thing, their entity, so you're going to have to prep you know water all the same water for each of them but guess what you're gonna have to go lift and dump this one out lift and dump this one out rather than just siphoning all out of the same reservoir and refilling it from there and all plants being good starting off i would say do like one or two plants to really get the feel for some dwc and allow you to really hone it in that's what i should have done and that's the advice i want to give to you but just focus on something small and then from there work your way up okay you did two no problem bump it up to four try that out and then just keep going on to you know abide by your laws of course but just do whatever you're comfortable with doing next you'll need some sort of grow media and i know i said it was soilless well it is soilless you don't want to use soil in dwc it's just not going to mix it's going to be very dirty um when i say grow media i'm talking about something that can hold the plant upright it doesn't need to have any nutrition value at all 
I highly recommend using the clay pebbles because for one, they're cheap. We all love cheap stuff. We're trying to be as cheap as we can. And guess what? They're reusable. So you're recycling. You're just going to constantly just use them out, clean them, sterilize them. First, when you get them, you want to knock some of that clay off there. They're going to be covered in clay. So you want to rinse that off anyway. And in between grows, you just sterilize them to reuse them for the next grow. They're also pH neutral. So you're not going to really have to worry about them affecting the pH of your water. Next up, you're going to need water. Most people have water in their homes. You know, you got a tap water right there. You got a faucet and some people's isn't drinkable. So you're probably going to use something like reverse osmosis or you're going to have some sort of filter to actually filter out your tap water to make it safe. As long as it's safe for you, it should be safe for your plants 9 out of 10 as long as it's not too hard of water, um, which you can test that out with like some sort of TDS meter and check that out. But you're going to want some sort of water. Reverse osmosis will be the best because, I mean, in DWC, you want everything to be sterile, so why not start from scratch with something like RO water? But you could also get by with tap water. That is what I use. I do plan to go on to some OR water, and I'm not going to tell you guys, hey, you need RO water. What I will say is try tap water out make everything as simple as you can starting off don't just go out and get everything you know get all the stuff you need and then get the stuff you want in the next grow after you've kind of figured it out and be like, okay this would actually help me so don't just rush and just go grabbing everything to go with your water you're going to need some sort of nutrients now i'm not going to sit here and recommend something and say hey this is the best thing out there i'm not the nutrient expert and there's not too many nutrient experts out there that some people are going to claim to be but guess what a thousand people could say this is the best thing then another thousand could say it's the worst thing to each its own everyone has their preference um there's plenty of great things out there there's plenty of great products out there just look online do some research and figure out like hey this is going to work this has worked for a million people and only five people complained well it sounds like a good option right um just do some research figure out what's going to work like i started off the cheap route i went general hydroponics a lot of people start off with that and the only complaint i have about it i mean great job right i got from seed to harvest i was fine the only problem i have about it in dwc you're going to lose that appeal because they have dyes in there so you're going to get some staining and that's going to you know change the color of the roots but that's not really that serious right but now i'm running athena far more expensive than general hydroponics but it's a lot more clean there's no dyes and my roots stay nice and pretty the whole time but i'm not going to say hey go get athena like i said do your research and figure out what you want to use you may already have nutrients so run with that as long as it's going to be water soluble you'll be fine okay next you're going to need an air pump and this is where i would say you know don't go too small don't be trying to be too cheap in this area because you're going to eventually buy the next biggest thing and as well as this is why i'm saying start off with a few plants rather than a lot because the more plants you start off with the better the pump you're going to have to get the bigger the pump you're going to have to get so if you only start one or two plants you may be able to get by with a cheaper pump but i would just say right away go ahead and spend the extra 20 bucks and go ahead and get a commercial pumps because most you know like the average pump is going to be about 30 dollars. go ahead and pay an extra 20 and get a commercial grade pump and when i say commercial grade you'll look on there they say commercial they're putting out way more oxygen or more air than the other pumps what is recommended is that you have a pump that's providing a fourth of air per gallon of water and what that means is say you have four gallons of water you're going to want something that's pumping out one gallon of air per minute or 60 gallons per hour so that's all going to depend on the amount of water you use and how many buckets you use but i would always say just just go more me i'm pumping at my pumps 1100 and i only have a call i technically only need about 300 or 250 gallons per minute or per hour so i went ahead and went big i'm literally getting four or five times more than the recommended dosage so that's why i would say go big and invest in this department you're also maybe going to want a backup pump you don't have to get this right away um you just want to have something on standby as you you're probably going to get a cheap pump at first and then you're going to upgrade to a bigger pump so that old pump is now going to become your backup pump that's exactly what i did i didn't get a backup at first even though it was recommended by a lot of people but i didn't run into any problems in that department and i hope you don't as well so like i said do what you can handle for the pump you're going to need an eighth inch airline tubing yes you want to get the airline tubing you don't want to get something like straight and not bendable unless that's just your style you're rocking pvc or whatever but i would just get airline tubing it's going to be super easy you're going to be able to just cut how much you need make sure you have enough cut it route it to, as long as it can make it from your pump all the way to your buckets it's only what a couple feet or you probably got the pump right next to the buckets however you're going to do it or run it outside just make sure that you have enough of that airline at the end of the airline you're going to need air stones now the air stones are going to come in all shapes and sizes you got the circle ones you got the rubik's cubes ones um you got the cylinder ones it does not matter as long as you get someone that's really good quality you don't have to worry about any leakage and what I mean by leakage is make sure you uh, read the reviews because you can look at some air stones and um, they may look good they're fairly cheap probably like two out of five stars we'll go look at those reviews because most likely you're gonna see some reviews that are saying like hey there's some leakage coming from it and what I mean by that is so there's a little needle on the air stones that connects to the airline tubing it goes right in there and around that little us uh, is a seal 
if that seal isn't properly secured then there's going to be air being pushed right there rather than going all the way through the air stone there's a bunch of options all over amazon just go ahead and look um the ones i have i have two inch by four inch i got some pretty big ones that i also have a pretty good big pump if you got a smaller pump you may have to go with like two inch air stones instead but as long as you can look in your reservoir and see like hey that's a lot of bubbles well guess what that's a lot of aeration so you're going to be good how many air stones you need well that really depends on how many buckets you have you're just going to need one per bucket if you're running a four bucket system you need four air stones um, you can get extra that's what I do that way when I do you know some of your cleaning you could just exchange them out go ahead and start cleaning the ones you just use and get some fresh ones in there or you could literally just go ahead and clean the ones you just use and put them same ones back in there it's all gonna be up to you eventually you'll just probably end up with a bunch of air stones anyway because you're gonna want to try different ones out so I'll let you figure that out but as long as you got one per bucket you're gonna be good that'll be it make sure you join me in the next episode where I really talk about like how to get the system going and what are the correct temps and all that other stuff we want to make sure that system is honed in before we start planning but we're going to get to planning as well but go ahead and leave a like comment subscribe to the channel until next time guys peace this video is brought to you with the help of the channel's sponsors spider farmer is a familiar name to most home growers and that's due to the countless people that use their products I'm currently using their SC5000 LED grow light which is a 500 watt light and I'm using that in my 4x4 tent this light fits perfectly within my tent and offers max light coverage throughout the entire canopy I'm honestly a huge fan of the Barstall lights and they do it right over at Spider Farmer but the main reason I'm attracted to this light is due to the aesthetic and the accents of the orange that these lights it just caught my eye and it's part of the logo color so I had to go with that. They have a huge variety of LEDs ranging from 30 watts all the way up to 1000 watts so it's safe to say there's something in there for all growers. If you're interested in checking out any other products check out the links down below in the description they'll lead you straight to their website as well as Spider Farmer being nice enough to give us a discount code. So at checkout make sure you use code DUSA Farms and earn yourself a discount. Yes, I do earn commission from referrals, but it's only 3%, so it's not a lot. But at the end of the day, any purchase will help out the channel a lot.